1758, Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus created a system for categorizing and naming living things. We still use the same system today, and a date uh, we have described and entered into databases 1.25 million species, with a further 700,000 described but not yet actually entered into the databases. We really don't actually know just how many species there are. In 2016, though, a new DNA sequencing uh, research study from Indiana University suggests Earth could contain nearly one trillion species if you include all of the bacteria and the archaea. Actually defining exactly what a species is is much harder than you may think. There's no one definition that will always work and taxonomists use different rules in different situations. They call these rules species concepts and these are the most popular. The biological species concept, uh, the phylogenetic species concept and the morphological, phonetic or typological species concept. Now each concept is really just a set of criteria that scientists can use to decide if, an organisms, if organisms are in the same species or not. They don't work for all organ organisms and so it's just more of a tool than a rule. Um, scientists, put, uh, depending on what the species concept is that they're using, uh, will put more weighting on one particular criteria than maybe another one. Some of the things that they would look at are the morphology the physical features of the species, its behavior, its physiology, its biochemistry, what ecological niche does it have, uh, what about its embryology, how does it breed, and its evolutionary relationships with other organisms. Now the biological species concept, or BSC, uh, is really all about how species are reproductively isolated from each other. That's the major criteria here. Ernst Mayer came up with the idea in 1942. This idea has been built on and developed over the last few decades. It's probably the most common species concept used and it states that a group of organisms with similar characteristics that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring are from the same species. Now some organisms can interbreed but the offspring are actually infertile, they're sterile. They lack homologous pairs of chromosomes, so they cannot make gametes by meiosis. Now these organisms are what we call hybrids. The parents will be classified as separate species because they can, although they can interbreed uh, and they have similar characteristics, they cannot make fertile offspring. Their, their offspring are infertile, sterile. So therefore they're separate species. Let me give you an example. A donkey can actually mate with a zebra and you would make a z-donk. And that can happen. But the Z-donk is infertile, it's sterile. Okay, there's lots of examples of this, lions and tigers making a liger, or um, a zebra and a horse making a zorse, or a donkey and a horse making a mule. But these offspring are sterile, they are uh, infertile, and therefore you classify those two uh, mating parents as separate species. Now, if this species concept worked perfectly, there would be no need for the other species concepts, and, and we would all just accept that this is the way to do things. But there are problems with it, and that's why that's not the case. Many organisms don't actually reproduce sexually. What about bacteria that do asexual reproduction? This doesn't work for them in terms of classification. Um, plants often interbreed with different species to produce fertile hybrids. How can we classify sp fossil species? We don't know if they could reproduce to make fertile offspring or not. Um, identifying separate species using, using the biological species concept can be very hard. Part of the definition is that they have similar characteristics, but this isn't always that clear. You can have a huge amount of uh, intraspecific variation. What about uh, sexual dimorphism? This is when you've got males and females of the same species that look completely different. Uh, now this can, it's very common in birds, and this can be a real problem when you're trying to classify species. However, with modern technology, we now have some very good methods to help determine species similarities. DNA to DNA hybridization, um, the comparison of amino acid sequences, and immunological comparison. So we're gonna look at these now. So what is DNA to DNA hybridization? Well, basically, if you heat up DNA so that the hydrogen bonds break, and so you split it into separate strands, um, and then um, com uh, combine these strands, these are from two separate species, so you've got some DNA from the first species you want to compare, species A, and you've got the DNA from species B. You heat them up so that they separate, and then you combine them all together. So you've mixed these 
two organisms' DNA together. And then what you get is something called uh, renaturation. This is when the strands start to pair up. Now, obviously, strands only pair up if they have uh, bases that will match and sequences that will match up. So the closer the DNA is to each other from species A and species B, then the more it will pair up and become hybridized. And we can actually um, check how much that's happened by looking at the amount of heat that you need to separate these hybridized strands again. Uh, and that's a measure of the actual, uh, how much DNA they have in common. What about amino acid sequence analysis? Well, this is basically where you take a common protein, maybe something like cytochrome C, and you compare the amino acid sequence in the two different organisms. The more similar the sequence is, the more similar the species. Huge amounts of data is being created by these kind of amino acid uh, sequence analysis experiments, and uh, it all needs to be processed and analyzed. And this has led to a relatively new field of science called bioinformatics. The last uh, way of de helping determine species similarity is look at immunolog immunological um, comparison of proteins. Basically, specific antibodies bind specific antigens due to their structure. Now, if we see how the same antibody binds to a protein from two organisms, we can see how related they are. So, if I inject a protein, an antigen, in, from which I've taken from species A into an experimental animal like a mouse, that mouse will make some antibodies against that protein. Now, if I take the same protein from species B and see how it reacts with those antibodies made by the mouse, I can see how similar uh, these two proteins are. The higher the similarity, the more antibodies will bind to that protein. And so if I uh, look at the precipitate formed, um, that will tell me how closely related these species are because more antibodies will have bound to more protein if the precipitate is higher. Now, how do you actually identify a species? Uh, if you find species in the field, you can use something called a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key is basically uh, where you have a question which has two answers, two possible answers, a yes and a no answer, basically. And you follow through the key logically, question by question, it will help you to identify what species, uh, the species that you have found. For example, there's a really simple key that I've made, just looking at uh, helping to identify these four uh, species of uh, the cat family.